Hey everyone, it's Mario and today I'll be diving into a topic that might not be the most exciting but it's crucially important for anyone living or working in Denmark and that is pensions. As an expat, navigating the Danish pension system can be confusing and overwhelming but understanding how it works is a key to secure your financial future. And in this video, I'll break down everything you need to know about pensions in Denmark, including some key numbers and figures and also give you all what you need to make informed decisions and plan for a hopefully comfortable retirement. If you're new here, my name is Mario and on this channel I help people living in Denmark to achieve financial independence and overall live a great life. The three pillars of Danish pensions. The Danish pension system is built on three main pillars. There is a state pension, there is an occupational pension and there are private pensions. The state pension is also known as a Folke pension and it's a basic pension that the government will provide to anyone who is a Danish resident so long as you fulfill certain criteria which I'll explain in a minute. On top of that, you can get an occupational pension which will be arranged via your employer and it's a key part for most Danish employment contracts. On top of that, you have private pensions which are voluntary and allow people like you or me or whoever wants to save additional money for retirement going through your bank or a private pension company. Understanding how these three things interplay with each other is a key thing to get the most of the Danish pension system and that's what we're going to be looking next. The state pension, so the Folke pension. The state pension is a universal pension that ensures a basic level of income to all people that are retired in Denmark. As of 2023, the pension was 6,853 Danish krona, so that's a bit less than a thousand euro per month for a single pensioner. And it would be 5,140, again 2023, so that's 700 euro-ish per month for a member of a married couple or a cohabiting couple. To be eligible for this full taste pension, you must have been living in Denmark for at least 40 years between the ages of 15 and 65. And if you have not lived in Denmark for those 40 years, you might still be eligible to a partial pension based on how long you have been living. So for example, it will be reduced by 1 40th of the amount of time you have not been living, living in Denmark. So if you have only been in Denmark for 20 years, you might be getting half of the pension. The state pension is again funded through taxes and is adjusted annually based on wage developments. This pension is hard to live from, in Denmark especially, unless you have something else on top. Either you have to save through your life or you go in through the other pension schemes we'll explain now. Next are occupational pensions, and in Danish they are called the Arbein Markets Pension. These occupational pensions are a key feature of the Danish system and are typically arranged with collective agreements between employers, meaning the companies that employ people, and the unions that represent the employees. Under these agreements, the way it works normally is that you will be paying part of your salary towards a pension fund and the company would be matching that or putting something on top of that to the pension fund. So you basically have your contribution and the company's contribution. And this can be quite wide, from 5% to sometimes 20% or more. Again, will depend from company to company. I can explain, for instance, in my own personal case, I work for Maersk and I put 5% of my salary that goes automatically to the pension and I can negotiate that. I mean, that 5% goes to the pension and then Maersk would put another 11% on top of my salary that goes straight to the pension. But again, this goes different from company to company. And again, like what you just need to know is that this is something that you negotiate when you start with your new company or in a new job. But most companies have a certain, a certain standard for all their employees. Once this money is in a pension fund, it will be invested on our behalf, usually in a mix of stocks, bonds and other securities, with the goal of hopefully growing that pension fund over time. You can typically start withdrawing your occupational pension when you reach the Danish pension age of 67 years old and just note as well that these 67 years old are meant to be increased to 68 years old by 2030 and again if you are on, of an older generation your age might be lower than what it is now for people that will be my age will you be 67. It's not set in stone there are options that you could retire the pension early so for example if you become very ill or you have less than five years between that time right now and your retirement age there are always certain things like this quirks that you could use to get your pension earlier but of course there will be tax implications. The third pillar it's private pensions or in Danish private pensiona. In addition to the state and occupational pensions which is what most Danes and most people like me have as pensions, Danes or at least some of them choose to save additional money through retirement through what it's called private pension schemes and this can be for instance when you pay for an annuity pension, lifelong pensions, installment pensions, all of these different things that you have basically their own rules and tax implications. Basically like the idea here is that if you're having a really high 
tax rate and you want to not have to pay so much taxes on your income because maybe you're earning too much and you don't need the extra money, this kind of setups could offer you some tax advantages. And again, the contribution subventions are always tax deductible. But again, when you have your investments in a pension, they will still be taxed just at a lower rate. I'm not a personal expert on this private pension system. I don't use it myself, but I just know that some people just want to investigate on this. If that's your case, I recommend that you follow up on that as well. One of the most complex aspects of the Danish pension system is, surprise, surprise, taxation. Contributions to the occupational and the private pensions are generally tax deductible, as I said, meaning that once you put in the money in the pension, you don't need to pay income taxes on that money. So it goes basically from your pre-tax receipts. But when you start receiving the payouts from the pension in your retirement, then you'll, they will be taxed as income. Just important to note is that once your money is in the pension like bucket and it's being invested, as I said, you will be taxed on or your pensions will be taxed on the gains of those investments in the pension funds each year, even if you don't cash out. So again, going back to Denmark's obsession with the unrealized gains tax. So the rate is around 15% and it's taxed again each year. So if your pension and there are options that you can they do, for example, to take all your money in the pension fund and invest it at the way you want. I mean, that can also be done. It's more complicated, but you can do it. But if that's your case and you want to put, for example, all in Apple stock, you literally at the end of the year, assuming the Apple stock has gone up, you literally need either need to put more money yourself in a pension account or sell some of the Apple stocks in your pension account to pay this 15% tax year on year. Again, you need to do this even if you're really far away from retirement. One thing to note as well in terms of taxes is that in case you want to cash out your pension earlier, so meaning that you are 40 and you want to cash out your pension, you can get that paid out. It's just that you need to pay a 60% tax on all of the money that you will be cashing out. And again, this is meant to discourage people from cashing out their pensions because again, this is meant to save for your retirement, not to pay something right here and now. So don't buy a new car or a new house basis on the money that you have in the pensions. That's why the taxes are so high. And that is not something that is Danish specific, but it's something you will see in almost any other country as well. Now, what if you leave Denmark? So if you're an expat who lives in Denmark and you decide to leave Denmark permanently before reaching out the retirement age, it's important to consider your options with your pensions in Denmark. So when it comes to the state pension, the one that we mentioned first, the first pillar, the fourth prevention, you may be able to be get some of those pension based off on how many years have you resided in Denmark and you can reply, you can apply to receive this pension even if you're living abroad. So long as again, there's some eligibility, eligibility requirements, just be aware of that there is an option. Again, if you have lived so much here and you have contributed so much, it makes sense that you get paid out something. When it comes to the occupational pension, you basically have three main options. The first one is to keep it in Denmark, just let it there while you're living in somewhere else. Just know that because Denmark taxes the pensions and realize each year, it's likely not the best option because the moment you move that money away, you don't need to pay that tax. But you just need to check because it's technically possible to move your pension account to another country. So for example, if you move to Slovakia, you know, you can likely move your pension account from Denmark to Slovakia and transfer all the money. But it's something that needs to be done in close coordination with accountants because it's can be kind of complicated and the laws will depend from country to country if it's allowed or it's not allowed. And then of course you can always catch it out like this 60% option I mentioned, but probably you don't want to do that. In all cases, the way you will have to proceed on this will depend on where you move to where, or where you decide to settle for the long term. There will be tax treaties that govern these things. And again, like it's much better to work with serious accountants that are specialists on this. Speaking about accounting and taxes, if you want to hear more about the Danish accounting taxes system and all the different taxes you'll pay as a person living in Denmark, you should check this video out. Thanks for watching.